she's one of the most iconic mother figures in the history of American television. In the 1980s, she became a household name with her role as Bill Cosby's wife, Claire Huxtable, in the hit sitcom, The Cosby Show. Since then, she starred in movies, TV series, and on Broadway, and in 2004, became the first African American to win a Tony for Best Leading Actress in a Play. Celebrated actress Felicia Rashad. I'm Maria Hinojosa. This is One on One. You were also growing up at a time when there was segregation. Legal segregation. Legal segregation. In this country. Can you tell me the story about what you did when you were a little girl and you saw the water fountain? I love this story. <laughs> well, first of all, let me just say, this all begins with my mother, Vivian Ayers, who decided that her children were not going to be scarred by racism. So uh, if there was something that we wanted to do or some place that we wanted to go and we were not allowed to go because of legal segregation, she would say, um, well, we're not going to go there because that's a private club and we're not members of that club. And we'd say, oh, okay. <laughs> All right? Okay, Mom. Yeah. Go. And in the meantime, uh, we tumbled in the living room. She'd move the furniture away and teach us to tumble. She'd bring all of our friends in off the street and teach us choral speech. She taught us to read music. She had literature. I mean, then there was John Biggers and uh, Joseph Mack and all these artists who were in our home all the time. So our world experience was not defined by legal segregation. And when your world experience is not defined by legal segregation, your understanding of yourself is broad. Okay? So there I am. I've learned how to read. <laughs> and I'm in the grocery store. And uh, there are two water fountains. And one says for colored, and the other one says for whites only. Well, I was always a curious child, most inquisitive about life and things. I always wanted to know, you know, where things came from and what they were and why. And I looked and I would read, I would read that sign, I'd look at that sign, and I'd and I look at that sign and I'd say, now why, why is that like that? Did you know white? Did you understand that was for white people? I was beginning you, to understand you, you know, it. I was beginning to understand it, but I wanted to know why. I mean, you know, I understood that that was going on. By this time, I understood what was going on, but I didn't quite understand why, because it never made sense, <laughs> you know? Still doesn't make sense, right, <laughs> okay? Right. Um, so I decided, I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna taste that water. <laughs> Which was a big deal. I went over there and I tasted that water. And that water didn't taste any different. And I knew something in that moment that I wouldn't be able to articulate for a long time. And that was that humanity had tricked itself. To believe that somehow we can separate ourselves. ourselves. Humanity had tricked itself into, not, into refusal, refusing to accept itself in its fullness. Mm -hmm. 